to Bear With Me, presented by Prize Picks and by Game Time. The Boston Bruins take a 1 0 series lead over the Florida Panthers in Sunrise, the Sunshine State. Sun, sounds- sun- Sunrise, yeah. sunshine. Yeah, is it the sunshine state or is it uh, the orange? There's a bunch of sun going on down there. What is California then? The Golden State. Uh, my name is Joey Capone. That's Rob Tachi. Rob, what's going on, buddy? Hi, I'm doing well. That felt so good. <laughs> that felt amazing. Uh, obviously, like th- the prevailing belief around this series was even before it happened was, oh, whoever comes out of Bru- Bruins, Toronto, they're just going to get walked by Florida. And at the very least, we had that one game where that didn't happen. And uh, here's the thing. Yeah, we we had said that, like, game one is, like, a really good spot for them to uh, take a game and just split them in Florida uh, because, you know, the bees have some momentum going. Florida's been stagnant for a little bit. Uh, you know, they haven't seen each other in a while. Bees have the uh, season sweep over the Panthers this year. Um, so I went into it like, yeah, they might win game one and that would be cool and, you know, stretch the series and, you know, anything can happen. And then I saw them play the game, Rob, and, uh, I don't see how they lose a game. I don't see how the Bruins lose a game. Uh, they look too good. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, I actually do believe in this team to win this series now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm unfortunately I bought in to yeah. a, a sickening yeah, amount. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I, I would, I, in the last episode, I was like, yeah, I don't even care what happens. And then like the, the moment Laura scored that goal, I was like, we're winning the cup. Like that's, it's over. <laughs> like it's, it's, are you kidding? We got Mason point, doing that shit. Like at what point during this, like if they take a three, one lead, God forbid, I said it again, a three, one mm. lead. If they take a three, one lead, I think I actually start to get cusp, cup aspirations. In like any series or like in this the second series, or this, this series. series. I'm already there. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe not. But I'm starting to think if they get out of this series, I think the rest of the teams are, well, what? Florida has the best or the second best odds to win the cup right now. So if you can beat that team even definitively, then yeah, I feel feel pretty good at this point. The the teams that are remaining are all filthy. Like they're so good. Uh, And the Bruins for like the first time in, a very, very long time are like handedly the underdog, uh, which man, there's a lot of freedom in that. Like I feel it like going into game one, I was like, just play, just do what you do. Yeah. And they did. And he won five to one. And th- as good as they did look, there's still so much room for improvement. Charlie McAvoy is still not playing that well. And you won five to one. Your goal scorers were Morgan Geeky, Mason Lori, Brandon Carlo, Justin Brazo, and Jake DeBrusque. That's wonderful. That is depth. I, I feel very good about this series right out of the gate. I do believe Florida is going to be shot out of a cannon tomorrow night. I, I think it's possible that week long rest kind of maybe did catch up to them a little bit. They still look good. Like they they weren't like getting pushed over last night by any means. Uh, no. The Bruins, if anything, there was like a, a very long stretch of time where the Bruins were just holding on for dear life. Uh, unfortunately for Florida, we have Jeremy Swayman in that. Uh, but so I, I out of game one, I feel wonderful. I If they can take both games in Florida and come home up to nothing and even split those two games. Yeah. Yeah, like That's, I should probably yeah. wait to see how game two goes, but I'm I'm already ahead of myself. I, I'm with you. I believe too much and i'm like all right let's go just end them take care of them it's fine yeah that's the thing is i had said last episode like if they can split in florida i'd feel great and uh the second that game ended i was like i want them both i need them both oh yeah god oh, yeah. yeah and then you texted me five minutes later and we're like uh can you imagine coming back to boston up too well i was like yeah no i am i'm imagining it right now actually you're interrupting my daydream as we speak because that's what i'm picturing is game three at the garden up too well uh, I think it's, I don't want to say likely, but it's a strong possibility. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I agree. Go ahead. I was going to say, one of the reasons I feel much better getting into this series now, uh, so Bob is Bob. Bobrovsky is very, very good. He's a Vesna candidate this year, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and mm-hmm. has won Vesnas in the past. 
going into game one, they're like, oh, the stellar numbers of Sergei Bobrovsky. His number, he has a 278 and an 896 what? save percentage. I'm like, what? that is not good. That's not good. That's okay. That's not Against the great. Lightning? Yeah. They won that series four to one, and his numbers were a 278 two, and Get an 896. And they're looking at Swayman with a 950 and a 150. Didn't like, somebody, who was it that called it a wash on the goaltending front? Was yeah, that Whitney? Whitney? I, I don't know about a may probably probably they did say in the beginning on the the broadcast they're like this is probably the best matchup remaining like in terms of goaltenders and I was stunned to see Bobrovsky's numbers I expected so much more of him and they got worse he had an eight five seven this game and let in four goals not great wow and meanwhile you got Swayman putting up numbers that are making people around the league being like who or not even who people know who Swayman is at this point but. Like he he is, in my opinion, eliminated the rotation talk. It's like this guy is basically doing the throwing the equivalent of a no hitter or like something close enough to it where you're like, I don't think you can sit him right now. Like it's not like, oh, yeah. we, we Olmark's very good too. And yes, he is. Olmark Swayman has over a nine, he's a nine fifty five right now, and like a one point four one, I think. He's let in two or less goals seven games in a row. If he can do that three more times in a row, that is an NHL playoff record. Yeah, I think it's I think it's time to say. Uh, and I this is another hand up moment. It's time to say. It's Swayman's net. It is. It's Swayman's yeah. net. We and. <clears throat> You know, we talked about all year, the rotation, blah, blah, blah. But we also said, you know, you ride the hot hand and whatever. Uh, I didn't foresee either one of them getting this hot. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is something special, folks. Take note of what Jeremy Swayman is doing right now. I still think there is room to get him a rest day. Once, maybe twice a series, depending on how things are going, you know, I still think that that's, that's more than in the cards. I don't think it's unlikely that Omar gets either game two or game three. Uh, but I don't think that that's in an attempt to truly rotate. I think the difference is that it is getting Swayman off of his feet and nothing else. Uh, just cause this is a different workload for him, uh, which is, you know, the big thing that I was preaching about, you know, not liking riding Swayman. Um, but when he's this hot and he's this consistent and this just chipper, just a breath of fresh air, a beacon of hope, if you will. He's mentally somewhere end. else all game long. He's on a beach, bro. Whenever there's he's a scrum, a it's like all like, you know, a, a 10 players on top of him in the crease. Whenever they zoom in, he's just there smiling, chuckling like, hey, everybody, thanks for coming by. And Laura, they asked, uh, Ty Anderson asked Laura about him. He's like, oh yeah, no, he's just singing songs. Like he just, <laughs> like he's just like taking it easy, having fun. Reminds you that we're just playing a game, and in turn, it makes it so the other guys on the team are like, yeah, you're right. We, we should just be having fun. He he is so good, and nobody could have predicted this because if somebody was like, yeah, but what if Swayman has a nine sixty? Would have been like, okay, well, shut the fuck up because he's not gonna have a nine sixty <laughs> in in the middle of the second round. Although he does. Uh, no, I, 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 and I don't, I honestly, I'm going to take the opinion that I am not worried about the workload. I just am not, I don't, I, I, in a way mm. I mm. find it a little coddling, if anything, to be like, oh, he can't. It's like, I know it's like new, but what about his game is telling you he needs rest. Nothing. The fact that, ah, uh, uh, well, mm. no, meet, there's meet me in the there. middle here. Come on. Meet no, me in the middle I, here. I fully believe he gets every start until he gives them a reason not to, and he has not given them a reason. He is absolutely you your listen, starter. A guy can't play you know, 30, 40 games a year every year and then suddenly get every game every day. And look me in the eye and be like, I'm not worried about this workload changing. Like it's the playoffs. It's like I'm the, just not. I'm not. That's right that's, now. I, that's I'm not disingenuous. That can. It's not. I'm being serious. Like I, with the evidence that has been presented through the first round and one game in the second round, which isn't a lot as far as the playoffs. Like as far as the playoffs will go, 
Right now, I don't feel that way. Could be two, three games from now, and he like lets in like a stinker, and he's like a little slow moving around. It's like okay, maybe like we got a two game, a two day break coming up. Give Omar the game after that, so then Swayman can get like four or five days rest and really get back up. But right now, I I I just do not see it being an issue in the immediate future. But if it is, it is. And then you put in your other A plus goaltender. It's not a big deal. I just That's the thing. Yeah. Is that like it's not anything worth worrying about. It's more just no. a fun talking point because it's not a worry. Like if you know, if something, you know, detrimental happened with Swayman, it's like you still have a fucking awesome goal. Like you're not Toronto. You're not going to Joseph Wall, which is terrible. And then going back to Ilya Samson Samsonov, which is also apparently terrible. So you know what my problem with Joseph Wall is right now? Uh, he's got a great name for a goalie, and he's not very good. Uh, well, no, the opposite. He is very good to the point where if you go to the NHL's stats for the playoffs, he is the leading goaltender in save percentage and goals allowed in his yeah, two games. Well, yeah, that's that's the thing. Is like there needs to be like some like qualified stat. It'd be like you know minimum I mean? three games. But or it throws like, it off because I want to be like, I want to look at Swayman lead in the league and he's not technically, he's, it's someone who is not playing anymore. Yeah. I mean, I just don't think that that's, yeah, that's just, that's just wrong. I mean, cause the thing is, what if you play 20 seconds and you get one shot and you yeah, say, I, don't, I, I you think just, it's just like a minimum one game played. And this is just off of the, uh, actually I'm looking at ESPN. So maybe the NHL website's different, but. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's how I feel about Swayman. I think he is putting together a run that I think some people are hesitant maybe to say the words con Smythe because it's so early, but like, that's the, that's the level of play no, right now. That, mind. That's fair. That, that's the level. I'm not saying definitively he's winning it or anything like that. I'm just saying that is the quality of play he's giving you right now. I mean, it's crossed my mind. I it, It's crossed my mind in the sense that, you know, God willing, if that happened and if they got there, it's not a question who gets it. That's how I've thought about no. it. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Did you there someone on Twitter decided to use Swayman's, you know, performance lately as a, a jumping off point to bring up that two grass never did such a thing. Did and, he not? Uh, no, he very much did. And the, oh, wow. the, the hockey no world way. collectively got together and be like, you're incorrect, actually. like, So you're telling me somebody hated on Tuca without having any kind of stats in front of them? Apparently, yeah, uh, if you could believe it or not. Uh, I wasn't prepared for it. I've yet to experience such clownery. But I, it was very heartening to see every reply basically being like, no, you are just factually incorrect. Like, all you have to do is point to the 2013 Eastern Conference Final when they played the Penguins, who should have scored like 20 goals, and they scored two goals, mm -hmm. two goals in four yeah. games. He had a nine eight seven five. What he does? It's what he does. Got it. What he Tuga. does? Tuga was in the locker room after Game Seven too. By the way, I didn't notice that. Yeah, they were they were showing hugs, and he he was hugging somebody. Else. And that's why I said to you, I was like, "Who's this old man in the locker room?" It's just Dukes. Uh, we'll we'll dive a little deeper into the the grits of this game, the nits of this game, if you will, the, the gritty, nips the nitty, game. the nips of this game. Of course, that's kind of uh, that's the main focus of the show. So we know that's why you guys are listening. Uh, first, a quick word from our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks is so easy to play. I can make my Celtic picks and make my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals and easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Celtics and NBA fans, you can get in on Prize Picks in 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. On Prize Picks this week, I'm selecting Jason Tatum to dish out more than five assists and his teammate Jalen Brown to have more than 22 and a half points. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Prize Picks. Um, what, what do you want to get to next? 
Uh, just random shit. I, I started taking notes in the beginning, and one of them, I, I don't even remember the context, but the the play by play people were going about talking about Monty. They're like, "Oh yeah, Monty's he brings the juice. He's gonna bring the juice," and he kept saying that. I'm like, "Is that an expression that I missed? Like, did something happen?" And uh, then I, yep. Have you seen all the memes on Twitter? It's like Sidney Crosby offers you a blunt. Do you accept? It's just like, it's just the blunt meme over and over again. It's like Nate McKinnon offers you a blunt. Do you accept? And I wanted to make it where just Jim Montgomery handing you a bottle of orange juice. I mean, <laughs> That's good. Juice. Do you accept? Monty's uh, finger games pregame oh. kind of convinced me of the dub before the game started. Saw that and was like, love that. Love How did that. you describe I him? A walking fights. gif? Is that what you said about him? Uh, he has a walking gif generator because he also had that face that he made i don't know what it was over i don't even remember but that face that he made where it looked like he was going yummy 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 <laughs> so i said it bring up nips again it looked like he wanted to rub his nipples that's like he just was like uh, mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> i, I, remember I saw it on, on my tv and took a video i was like did you see this <laughs> what is this face it looks like ai it looks like somebody you know took a, a scan of jim montgomery and like you know used a a template or something crazy uh, talking about coaches i yeah. don't like paul maurice and i don't really know why no he gives me like do. robert california vibes that's accurate that's accurate yeah the i way think he answers questions well let me ask you this mm. Mm. when two morning doves mate <laughs> do they wait for uh the period to end I don't know what that means, but that's what I'm talking about. That's how it feels like he like I don't know. He's just he's very atypical in his in his deliveries of everything. Uh yeah, he's, it, weird. I, yeah, he's an odd guy. Um I didn't realize how long he's been he's been like almost nineteen hundred games behind the bench, too. That's why too many. Too too many. Uh we could just talk about some of the goals too. The that you you it took you a little bit to get a view of the Mac and Chuck opening goal. And you're like, so that's what it takes to beat Swayman. And at first I was like, what a good shot. And then on the replay, I was like, Oh, that went off the defenseman's leg. Mm. And that is the only reason that goal went in, which if I'm not, I might not be wrong here, uh, though I could be. I don't think Swayman's let in a goal that wasn't a deflection of some sort at this point, or like at uh, least like he's not let in a goal. That's like, yeah, he could have had that. Basically every goal that went in is like, yeah, that's not really his fault. I can't think of one, uh, not to say that it hasn't happened, but what does come to mind, or at least anyway, in this game, when I saw the goal, because I, I uh, full disclosure, was in the, the other room during that goal, came back and saw it when they went to commercial and they played it, uh, and I was like, oh, that's what it takes to beat Swayman. Like that, it makes sense why they score because that's what it takes to do it. Like you have, it has to be screened and deflected and Matthew Kachuk and, you know, quick release and the opposite direction and sneak inside the inner half of the post. Like it, oh, okay, that's, because I, because you text me, you're like, yeah, Kachuk scored. I was like, wow, that's stunning. That doesn't really happen a lot. And then saw it was like, oh, okay. That's that's why that yeah we'll give you that one Jeremy but uh, I can't think of any the only one that I can really think of is Omar had a squeaker in game two that went short side it's Omar yeah that's though. yeah exactly that's on yeah that's the only um, soft one that I can think of uh, not to say it hasn't happened because uh, I'm certainly not the memory guy but um, yeah that's it and anywho, uh, anywho yeah I, it's it, even with the goal and a couple of big hits it felt like it was a fairly quiet Makachuk game. Yeah, not a lot of bad blood in this game in general. I mean, no. there was Pat Maroon is thirsty for it. Oh, uh, can uh, we just talk about Pat Maroon real quick? Let's talk about him the rest of the show. This is going to be a short one anyway. I, I, he just, how did we not get him earlier? I it, always I, loved him. I, never doubted it. I've always loved him. Uh, I With every shift, I understand more and more how this dude won three Stanley Cups. Like, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, or the team that this guy was on won three Stanley Cups, even if you want to call it that. Yeah, like it, uh, Lister Ryan, I think it was, took like a little hack at Swayman that like there was yep. it wasn't a productive hack. It wasn't like a loose puck or anything. It was just a pop like right on Swayman's back. And Maroon, it looked like they were going to have to get every official on the ice to get hit between him and Lister Ryan. like he wanted to rip his head off. 
it was WWE esque, like extra referees come down the ramp to try to break it up. I mean, it was like he pulled a knife on Swayman. His reaction, he might as well have. Like I, he was like yanking him, trying to get him between. Like the ref was in between him, and he was trying to yank him through the ref <laughs> towards him. He's like, I'm not done with you. And that then was there was awesome. like that good clip of him just like talking and smiling like before mm-hmm. the face off. And did you see the clip of him like the 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 lip on reading the, on the bench? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can we say it? I don't think we can say it. Can we say it? Yeah, say it. Uh, yeah. So he looked at the, he was I think he was on the ice and he looked over at the Florida bench with a smile on his face. He's like, what a bunch of fucking pussies. Like, That's just to <laughs> like, himself. Just to himself. Yeah, like not even it was like kind of even really do him. Yeah. And it's and one of the cover replies that said was like, oh, yeah, like real original. It's like, doesn't need to be, man. Like, that's yeah. Bam Maroon right. saying that to you. Like, and apparently, and I did not watch the series in 22, but when he was on Tampa and they played Florida, Florida had like no answer for Tampa whatsoever. And they had no answer for Maroon whatsoever, mm-hmm. which is all the more reason I'm glad he's on this team. I cannot imagine this run already without Pat Maroon as a part of it. Yeah, he he definitely is uh, seeing red a little bit with Florida, which is cool, which is cool that he has like a little bit of history there and that he knows that he can bully them a little bit. It just adds to it, you know, and I don't know how much juice there there is is in the battle of Florida, but I don't know. It's a pseudo rivalry. So I guess you can say that he had, you know, a little bit of of something there, a little bit of juice there with I'm going to pepper it in a few more times. I'm going to juice it in a few more times. Juice, a little bit of juice. Why not? Juice. Um, one thing that the commentator said about Pat Maroon that I thought was kind of funny is that they were like, uh, you know, Pat Maroon is the kind of guy, you know, you look back at past teams that have been in the finals and won the cup, you know, in the past decade or so. It's like you need a guy like Pat Maroon to get you there. And I was like, well, about half of those years, the teams had exactly Pat Maroon to get there. So I don't know if he's like an archetype as much as he is a guy that is on teams that go there. They're like, wow, you really need a guy like Pat Maroon. Like you go back and look, Tampa had uh, Pat Pat Maroon. Maroon. Uh, Tampa had uh, uh, Pat Maroon. St. Louis. Uh, The the Blues had uh, Pat Maroon. So you need a guy like Pat Maroon. Like, yeah, that's uh, incredible investigative work. But uh, yeah, no, like you said it, man. I can't imagine this this playoff run uh, without him now. Oh. Uh, no, uh, real quick before we move on, because I got something that I, I we need to bring up because it's very important to our show and our brand. But really quick, uh, here's a word from our good friends over at Game Time. With the NBA and NHL playoffs underway and the MLB season in full swing, there might be no better time of the year for sports. And there's no better way to experience the games than in person. And to get into the building, there's only one app that I use, and that's Game Time. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and their lowest-priced guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. The very best part, if you ask me, is the ability to get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you even buy. You want to know what your view is going to look like before you get your tickets, and Game Time is there to help you find the perfect seat. And if it's getting close to tip-off or puck drop, or first pitch, don't worry because Game Time's last minute deals can save you up to 60% off when you buy last minute. Tickets are even available up to an hour after the game starts. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. They had the high camera angle. They had the high camera angle. I was yeah. stunned when you said on the last episode, you're like, well, you know, national coverage, they might change it. I was like, no, that's not a thing. That doesn't happen. You can't just change the camera angle. They I'm did. So wrong. And I'm so happy I'm wrong. That was a good angle. That is a front row balcony angle. It was I, a good angle. I didn't even notice it at first because it's like, I don't know. It's like one of those things you don't always look for. And I, I mm. think kind of like one of our little uh, our bits is just like really drawing attention to camera angles at away arenas. Mm-hmm. So happy with that. That makes me That's a lot great. happier about playing these games in Florida. And removes that PTSD element of uh, yes. the low camera angle and thing. Big oh, time. my God, we're in Big Florida time. again. Yeah. Nope. So that was wonderful. 
Um, I didn't see any of the pregame inside uh, Amaranth Bank, which stop changing your name, by the way. Yeah, what was there? it before? Stop changing uh, FLA Live. Both are terrible. Yeah, I mean, FLA Live and Florida Live. Like, I, that, I don't know. that. I, I liked that. It's like, okay, that, it's where you are and it's where you go to live events. It's fine. But, uh, yeah, it, whatever it is now, don't love it. Um, but I didn't see any of the pregame stuff. I can't imagine. Can't imagine. Did you see it? No, not really. Okay, no. I, I, I have to use, like, shitty streams to watch this series because for some reason my ESPN Plus account, like, they just are not actually streaming this game through ESPN Plus. I don't know. It might be on my end, but I... I can only watch from like 8 p.m. on, so I don't get any of the really good pre pre game stuff. Yeah. Well, at that point, I'm just I'm just watching Nesson until the actual puck drop. Well, I'm just taking this opportunity to uh, take a dump on them. Then it sucked. Pre game stuff sucked. We didn't see it, but you know what? I heard through the grapevine, <laughs> it sucked. We have no evidence that it didn't suck. So you know who's having a great time in Florida? Who's having a great time in Florida, Joe? All of the beat writers. Have you seen them having a great? Oh, time they're down? thriving. I'm so happy. They're for living. Them. Yeah, they're living. They're having a great time. They're hitting the beach, getting some drinks together. Uh, I was actually envious. I was actually. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Yep. Synced up. You and I. Okay, you hit me with the envious, which is the correct word to use in this situation. But you showed me up a little bit. Well, I'm I'm envious of your vocabulary skills. Good. (laughs) Excellent. Uh, I Mason know Lara I is so I, yeah, good. I was I take yeah, back right to some it. of the yeah. things that I thought about before. I take back thoughts. I never even said these out loud, but I was getting frustrated with his uh, offensive mindset as a defenseman, just because I think it's very important to have stay at home, shut down defenseman. I'm a little old fashioned. Uh, my goodness, the kid can skate. The kid can play. You do need people to compensate on the back end for him, but if you have like a you know. Uh, some speedier forwards who are able to get back there. He is so much fun. He's so much fun. And what a shot. And uh, he's so good at controlling the puck in like one-on-one battles. Uh, his quick passes are usually pretty good. Usually His pretty confidence good. is yeah. incredible. Yeah. And that it is doesn't feel like arrogance to be underestimated. Either. No, no. He doesn't feel like a hero ball. I'm going to make the play regardless kind of guy. Like when he has the puck on his stick, it just feels like he has been playing the game long enough to just be calm, be comfortable and keep his head up, look around and uh, not be afraid of contact. It's like all the things that you usually see in young guys that you're like, well, that that'll, you know, that'll change with time. He'll get more confident with the puck. He'll get less afraid of contact. He'll get more used to the speed. Those are all the things he brings to the table right now. So yeah. he's a bunch of steps ahead. Uh, he looks great. Yeah. I, the I, game he's made. getting He's getting better by the game. Uh, yeah. You go back to like October or whenever his first game was with the team. And we're like, okay, you know what? Yeah. And like, not quite there yet, but had flashes. Like I can see the appeal and I could, you know, if he can work through like the, the bits he really does need to work through, he, he could really be something one day. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward to May and we're like, God damn, Laura is due for his goal. Any moment. Oh, there it is. He, there he it just is. roofed it uh, over Sergei Bobrovsky in the second round of the, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Fantastic. And playing good defense, too, mind yeah. you. Yeah. Like, that is, to me, even more important to see. Because the offense was never a question. That was it. Like, we're like, when he has the puck in the neutral and in the offensive zone, that is when I'm the most comfortable with Mason Laura being on the ice. The moment it's in the defensive end, I, I pucker up. I'm a little like, oh, I uh, don't don't go in front of them. No, don't make that pass. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, it was because he was not playing well uh, there. So right. to see him now being more physical, being stronger on the puck, making better passes, making quicker passes, mm-hmm. he's great. There, I, there was like one between the legs move he made that was kind of like okay, like it was like even, <laughs> all right, Mason. All right, like that. There was other options, but. I, I, I'm so happy. Uh, and Razor made a great point on Morning Brew, too, where he says that the team is definitely getting a kick out of him, too. Mm-hmm. They're like, look at this kid. Like, like that's got to be like a, a fun little boost. And yeah. there's been Tory Crew comparisons going back to 2013 when he showed up with the team in the playoffs and scored four goals on Henrik Lundqvist at the time. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So and and then you can even make the Charlie McAvoy comparison where he showed up in the 2017 first round against Ottawa. And you're like, damn, this kid is ready to play. I think Laura is older. I think McAvoy was like, wasn't McAvoy like 19 when he came into the league? Uh, He was young. I don't think he was 19. He might have been 20. How over old he was. The com- it's a good company. It's good company to be compared with. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. So happy to see Laurie doing what he's doing. Also on the defensive end, just worth a shout out. There's a weird one with all of the amazing uh, performances and like the breakout performances. But I think it's just worth mentioning because you said strong D. Derek for Forbert had a great game. Uh, yes. And I'm only yeah. saying that I really only say that because of how um, I don't want to say hate, but like the, you hate that he gets. Hate? I think no, it's, hate's the word. Yeah. It's stupid. Uh, I think that like you're not watching him like anybody who doesn't like Derek Forbert is only noticing his mistakes and then getting upset about them, which is fine because he's a defenseman. And if you're just casually watching the game, that's that's fine. That's probably how you should be watching your defenseman. I implore you. There's a word for you. I implore you. Watch Derek Forbert when he gets onto the ice, just like take a shift and be like, I'm just going to watch Forbert. Like he's so defensively sound. He was so strong. He was uh, playing hard late into shifts too. Um, so I, I think that he was worth pointing out. Obviously, Justin Brazo, uh, very cool to see uh, him get the goal that he did. Uh, he could really be, um, uh, you know, a, a big part of this series if he if he breaks out. If you start getting production from Justin Brazo, Mike, look out, look out. The bees Mike are... Rinell called it. He called him his he X did. Factor, and he got dragged by Whitney and Biz. They're like, really? That's a bad sign. Which I feel like any Bruins fan who did watch Brezzo this season knows that is not a, a ridiculous call. Like I had been calling yeah. for Brezzo. Like when, as soon as he was even available for Toronto, I was like, that's a boost. Like that's a good, that is a, that was a tough loss when he came out of the lineup. He was yeah. scoring goals. He was big down low. Like he did what he's still doing. Yeah. So I'm thrilled. And I don't even think he's hit his stride yet. I still think he's shaking off rust. I, I think he can bring a lot more than he already has. There, there was the, so much like speaking about this of game. the speaking of the lineup, really quick, just because you 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 mentioned it there, um, and like who's available and who's not, uh, just to do a little game two preview because the time by the time this comes out, I'm sure people are going to be looking ahead to game two, maybe listening to this the day of. We're dropping this Tuesday evening, but maybe you're listening to this Wednesday, getting stoked for game two, and you're like, what did Joey and Rob think they're going to do with the team? What do you think is it Monty going to shake things up again? Uh, I hope not. I hope not. The answer is I hope not. Don't do anything. I hope nothing changes other than uh, an occasional Omark game to get Swayman off his feet, which for some reason you think is a crazy idea to keep a goalie rotation in the playoffs, Michael Felger. Uh, And then uh, the only other thing is uh, when Peak is available to get him in. And I say only and I say only to include Danton Hine in there. Because I I did not mention his name. I think I I like this lineup, the way it is. The way it is. I don't know who comes out for peak. That's the thing. Oh, for peak. Oh, I thought yeah. I was, well. I was going to say that for Heinen, but uh, for peak. Same for uh, Heinen, honestly. Because I like Patrick Brown's game too. Not a lot of talk about that, but I liked his game. Let the he had nine hits. Yeah, he went five for seven at the yeah. dot, which is why he's here is to hit and win faceoffs. He did exactly what they wanted in less yeah. than eight and a half minutes of ice time. Hard to send him away after that. After that worked. Yeah, you know what I mean? To be that. like, hey, you came here, did exactly what we asked. Thanks for coming. I don't think that that's I don't think that makes a ton of sense. But then again, we've seen a couple of lineup changes that don't make a whole bunch of sense. So I'm not going to sit here and make predictions and say they don't change. But uh, I sure would like them to just roll this again and see how that goes. And here's the thing. This is a great game to do stuff like that because if you lose this game, I don't want to say you can afford to lose this game. It's the playoffs. But if you split in Florida to come back home, that is not worst case scenario. That is absolutely not worst case scenario. It's early in the series. You stole game one on the road. If there was ever a time to let it ride and see like, okay, I would normally like to change things up here, but maybe we we keep it going. I think this would be the time uh, to do that. So, that's the hope, but again, it's Jim Montgomery. Yeah, it's it's in a blender all the time. I uh, just want to say, obviously, big congrats to Carlo. What a mm-hmm. what a day! I mean, it's been talked to death. We don't need to go too into it. It's had a kid uh, at three in the morning. Well, his wife had a kid. He was there. Yeah, uh, flew up down to Florida in time, and then showed up and scored one of 
his better goals, I would say. There's like a mm-hmm. slow-mo sh- uh, shot of him taking that shot. And the flex on the stick is so good. And like that hit like the corner of the crossbar in the post too and went in. So many, again, so many posts and ins. Mm-hmm. All right. Not a post, but Giku shot. The one that was like when Bobrovsky just like ran into Zaka and like left the net open. Mm-hmm. Geeky roofed that so much more than he needed to, to the point where I'm like, that yeah. was a little close. Like he hit the top of the net. Lorai, top of the net. Carlo posting in. Rezzo posting in. And then, you know, Debrest empty net or no need to be flashy with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 it's such a good sound. My God, do I love that sound when it oh, goes in yeah. for us. I do like uh, that too. It's good. It's good. Uh, and another thing we're talking about is the Jim Montgomery timeout five minutes into the yeah. third period. Yeah. Masterclass. Beautiful. We, you and I both said it. Love that. There's mm-hmm. something it's so inherently, oh shit, about calling a timeout when it's not in the last like three minutes where it's like, hey, we got one timeout and I just used it now. What does that mm-hmm. tell you? Like, and it was like, everybody calm down because the Bruins are getting outshot like crazy. And mm-hmm. then after the timeout, they came back out as the better team. And then and scored two more goals. Yeah, <laughs> they scored two more goals. I that's, I that's I mean, that's just like you said, a master class, I guess that I don't uh, we probably won't know what he said. We might we might we might um, pasta being mic'd up and whatever. But like you said, like the wake up call of like, guys, we have this game. We have this game like lock it down. We're yeah. not about to let this thing slip away. Let's let's take a second here. Uh, I don't, it wasn't like, you know, because a lot of the times timeouts are for set plays, you know, mm-hmm. empty net, 40 seconds left running con- some kind of set play. Not at all. I think that was a, a head check and um, I don't know, maybe making some adjustments, but it seemed a lot more like a uh, rah, rah kind of timeout than anything else. And it worked Big and time. it worked. Um, do you have any other like closing thoughts here? This is going to be a short one. I got to get out of here. No, that's uh not really. I, I again, just I, you know, you got to get more out of McAvoy. Coyle looked a lot better than he did in Game Seven, but you need a lot more from him at the dot. He went eight for twenty three, which is not good. Like that, mm-hmm. it's another sixty forty faceoff series. It's looking like, which is not not great. Yeah. So they're winning despite all of these issues. So if and when they really iron them out, oh fucking boy, is this going to be a team? Uh, can't wait for game two. I fully believe that they have what it takes to get both wins in Florida and come home up to nothing. But as you said, a split's not the end of the world, but I really think they can and should get both. Four two Bs, game two. I like that. I like that score. Is that with an empty netter? Yep. It's a tight okay. one. Ooh, it's that's a, tight that's a three two. That's stressful. That's a stressful yep. game. It's going to be. It's going to be. Excellent. They all have been. Yep. Um, yeah. Did you also get the... Um, uh, see the little stat that uh, when the Bruins took the lead in this game, it was their first time playing with a lead since game four of the Toronto series. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? That's crazy. Anyway, I think they're going to win uh, games Uh-oh. one and two. And yeah, because they, yeah, well, they they've lost five, six OT winner in seven. OK, yeah, yeah fair, fair, never, fair, fair. Never led for a second in five or six or seven. You don't need to. You don't need another app. You don't. You don't need to be leading. You don't need to be winning the game. You don't need to be leaf all the time. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Follow us on Twitter at Bear With Me underscore Pod. You can follow me at Joey Capone. You can follow him at Rob Tachi. We'll be back after Game Two of this series to talk more about the Boston Bruins beating the brakes off of the Florida Panthers. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening, and And thank you for. Bearing with me, bring the juice. Ah!